Hey guys, I am here at Busher Park and I'm going to have to start paying closer attention. It's um, Smithville. It's in Smithville, Texas. And um, I don't even know how much it costs per person. I think it's up to about five dollars per person because it connects to another park which is um, bus stop but we're not going to bus drop today we're going to stay here in Busher and so um, I'm not quite sure if it's Busher or Busher but um, you all can be the be the judge let me show you the map So however you want to pronounce that. Anyway, as you can see, there's camps and a pavilion, which is where we're at right now is the pavilion. There's also boating. And right now, I am at this trail. And I am going to be, it shows here that we're at the bathroom, but I'm going to be hitting this trail. So anyway, um, there's quite a bit of track here and I'm going to see what I can cover so before we get started let me show you this nice pavilion over here now this pavilion is by uh, reservation only And there's a little sign over here as well, so we'll see what we can see about that. And it says protecting the legacy. Okay, that would have been the men building the pavilion. And that was it. In 1936. It was the CCC boys of companies 1805 and 1811. Cool. All right, let's take a look at this. Looks like the flies are out good today. Um, it happens to be a, um, this is very old, you can see. Um, it's a very pleasant day today. Look how this is made though. That's neat. That is really neat. But yeah, the days are decent. I mean, today is decent. The temperature is going to be very comfortable. A uh, great big contrast to how it was when I took in to um, the other park. And there's the fireplace. And some logs. It was made with rock and log. Let's go around here and look at this. The picnic tables are the cement. Hmm, interesting. This is, used to have been a water fountain, used to be. I guess at one time this was a fire place and they've got it boarded up and they would have sat around there apparently look at the old chimney and there's a chimney on the other one but they've got mold on them moss all right let's see if we can find the trail 
Might have to walk on the road to get to it. Maybe. I see a couple different paths here. Might be able to hit them one way or another. We had a pretty decent rain. It's really damp around here right now. There's some uh, scenic views. I don't know what the major ones are. Okay, this is just a campsite here. I see a trail. Uh, it might not be the trail though. Let's walk down here and we'll, uh, we'll look at the sign. Now, this is my, uh, my great walks, but while I'm at it, I'm going to give you an update on my weight. Yeah, you can, uh, this is, uh, camp parking uh, where you can do tents. They've got it marked out. Pretty nice. <sighs> ah, okay, there's the trail. Straight ahead. All right. I'll tell you more about my rate here in a little bit. All right, let's go on ahead and get started. Uh, as you can tell, I'm greatly out of breath, sadly. I have really, look at this tree. That's pretty fork. Anyway, um, I'd really letting myself go, and uh, uh, I wrote no ray in on my journal. But what I'd done was instead of raying the way I normally would. I uh, raid with my clothes on and I'm counting that my clothes probably had raid about two three extra pounds I didn't want to see what I was okay this is a red cedar that's nice they've got signs up to show you um But I'm calculating I might have came in at 193 or something. Uh, yesterday I went completely overboard. I mean, I just, I seriously blew it. And it was almost like I was thinking to myself, because I started out good with a small portion for my first meal of the day. But after that, it was almost like, all right, I'll just do it better tomorrow, you know? Almost like 
making it a brand new day today this is day 18 um, and I am definitely just blowing off whether or not I lose the three pounds for the week because of of course the circum the circumstance but um I had to come to terms with myself and you know I understand if it comes off sounding like I'm being hard on myself but I can't be easy on myself and I'll tell you why I become at ease if I don't keep on it so I'm not necessarily being mean to myself I'm just I'm having to stay on it and once again I came to God about it but I had to give it completely over to him different circumstances that I know I have no control over and that's just something I've got to constantly do these pebbles are so smooth seriously and they're all over this path they're just they're smooth my goodness they're smooth but um so yes but I expect for there to be some new changes I expect for there to be new changes and as time goes on I'll share more with you but not until I see that there are some really 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 good results you know I mean of course I'll continue giving you my journey every day I'll vlog it but I'll tell you more about what's going on as I go as I see better results here is a loblolly pine wherever maybe it's that and that hmm anyway let's see point of interest um Yeah, it said big re big tree retreat, but and then number three, which is on this trail, is a flower view crossing, but you won't see any flowers because they're not up and bloom yet. We've got It's almost like one single tree, but it's like branched out. Yeah, they've got signs all over the place here telling of the different plants, the different trees. That's, that's nice. This trail is a little on the tacky side where we had had that good rain. It must have rained really good last night or yesterday here. Um, but... The trail is somewhat sticky from the mud, but it's not bad. And I'm wearing my boots. So. All right. I will get back with you as soon as there's a POI. Now, Bestrup and Busher Park are individual parks, 
but they're actually together in a sense. There is a 12 mile park road that goes in between both parks and if you want to see both parks then it's a certain fee and you can go on I reckon as far as I know uh, hubby didn't see too much detail in the difference but they are connected by a park road Man, there must have been a lot of condensation in that bathroom. It was damp in there all the way. The walls, the stall doors, everything was damp. Constant from condensation. Anyway, oh, and that's another thing. They've got showers in the bathrooms. If you do RV or camping, they also have shelters. So, uh, yeah, they offer... Um, all sorts of camping areas, um, but as it happens, I, I don't know if it was both parks and Rum Park, but the history here is the dam broke and there was a flood and the forest also caught fire so my question is was this park or both parks destined to not exist because of it being damaged by two different ways um There's signs of uh, rotting and fire here. Um, and also it gives you warnings to watch for fallen limbs. But it's kind of a sad thing that a park would have flood damage and fire damage. Now I don't know what years either either took place but they've managed to uh, keep it going but it just it makes you wonder if it was destined to not exist at all because of the damage it might have been Bestrop that had suffered the damage it might be here at Busher. one or both not sure The trail is nice. Uh, there's one trail. It's um, the Pine Gulch. And it's supposed to be a very challenging trail. It says it is a steep hike. Uh, but right now we're on the winding woodland. And it's not too awful bad. It's not drastic. It's easy to hike okay let's look at this you know I'm so sorry my uh, my brain for some reason isn't so much here today even though it should be it's like when I started to fill out I had to do the self pay because I was out to lunch and so I had to fill out my address whereas you know it's on my uh, park pass all the information but um, I, I couldn't remember the street that I lived on couldn't remember the street number it was a good thing hubby was with me and he reminded me and I now remember the park that I showed you the last time and that was Colorado Bend Colorado Bend Park and that's what I was trying to remember back there at the pavilion. So I'm very sorry about that. I was talking to you about the temperature being nicer today. One thing I noticed about today's temperature, yes, it's warm, it's comfortable. I'm wearing short sleeves, which is nice. But it's also 
a very humidic heat. The which probably is the reason for the bathrooms to be so damp inside. Um, you can't necessarily feel the heat, or the humidity rather, you can't feel it. But it's on my clothes. I can feel it on my clothes, or on my skin. Yeah, I need more oxygen going back to my brain. <laughs> I need to start walking again, folks. That way I've got clarity of mind. I feel the dampness on my skin from the humidity. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Normally I, I've got a better train of thought than this. I'm sorry. I'll try to do better for the rest of the video. <laughs> Forgive me, guys. I'm just being normal at this moment. <laughs> All right. I'll get right back with you. Some of this trail is sandy, so it's not so bad. Um, it's not as muddy in the sandy areas. And as you can see, it's kind of smooth through here. The scene is very lovely with all the forestry. It makes it for a very peaceful walk. If you're wanting a leisure stroll, time to be alone to talk with the Lord or whatever it may be. Um, they do allow your pets. They've got to be on leash, of course. Um, the sand is very easy to walk on. It doesn't sink up, but it's solid sand, but it's very comfortable. Well, so that's good. It's not all muddy. It is a blue trail. They've got it marked. And remarkably, they've got markers all over the place. So far, what I've been to, this is about the most real marked trail system I've seen yet. So that makes it a lot easier for hiking. You know where you're at and it reassures you with the signs and stuff. So I'm back on the rocky ground again. Uh, this trail leads into the um, the Pine Gulch. It leads into it. Now, I don't know. had to wait for the helicopter to get over. I don't know if I'm going to walk the Pine Gulch or not. There isn't very many trails here, but the length in the trails makes it simple enough. Uh, the trail I'm on right now is a 1.5 and the pine gulch is a 3.5 now if i would choose i could either go to roosevelt's cutoff and go back down or cross over at the Bard Owl. Bard Owl. And those are very short trails and they can lead you back to the to this one. 
So we'll see how I'm feeling by the time I get to that point that leads to the Pine Gulch. We'll see if I can push on or if I'll have to turn around. And until then, if I see anything of beauty or difference, I'll get right with you. Oh, and if I didn't have the camera angled right, that's because I was looking at the map. So at least you got some pine scenery, if anything, if you didn't get the trail. Once again, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, I'll get back with you. They had said to be careful of fallen limbs. Here is a pine that completely gave way. Some uprooted stuff here as well. I've been seeing this. And they cut some of it out of the way there. They cut it. Mm, it wasn't very long ago. I can smell the fresh pine. It smells good. Okay. I'll step over it like that. I don't want to take a chance of rolling off the log wrong. Um, there's a little bit of burning here. Um, I was just getting ready to say before I came across that tree, I was getting ready to um, talk a little more to you. Um, what I've noticed about this trail is that it's very well walked on. So, you know, it's, it's well, um, it's a well traveled trail. And it's also very nicely maintained. Once again, we're across another trail marker. And I like that. I like, I like being properly guided instead of totally relying on a map. And it says that um, it reads, no claims are made to the accuracy So, you know, it gives you a general idea. Just like there at Colorado Bend, after I was done filming, I didn't film no more. I was done with the video. And I was still making my way to the trail, or to the car, rather. Um, ended up, according to my Fitbit, doing over nine miles. So... But anyway, aside from that, there was a couple S-curves and there was only one on the map. It didn't show the two. And there was some curves that wasn't shown on the map as well, along with the extra S-curve. And I kept looking back at the map to make sure that I, I wasn't maybe on a different trail and I wasn't but the map didn't make it look so bad and it was only supposed to be like a two mile trail and it was a lot longer than that I think which I was having to walk carefully because the trail was so very rocky um, but nonetheless it was like it was a lot longer than what it mentioned on the map in those curves it just is a hike but uh, now that I see that there's no claims to accuracy in other words like the mileage that they that they mention and the curves may not be correct but it gives you an idea so that you know you're in the general direction here's some fire here where there was a fire so yeah it was busher that ended up suffering from fire look here at this twisted trunk that's what I would have made a cane out of anyway so um, 
yeah the the trail is very well maintained and um well marked some trails i've been on at some state parks the trail was barely more than just a walked out path in a grassy area and you could barely make out the trail for the grass so i like how this one specifically is well marked and maintained it makes a difference for your hiking I'm a little mad at myself right now I heard a woodpecker okay and I knew it was right in front of me on a tree right in front of me so I quietly started to film so I could try to catch it and I'm trying to walk around to find it on that tree and it managed to fly off well I had the viewfinder in a completely different area so I didn't even get to catch the bird for you all and I was hoping very much that I'd manage to catch it in flight at least so it was a pretty large woodpecker and it was a red top similar to ruddy woodpecker only it had a black body not a blue body like he does but you know so he was gorgeous he was I'd seen small woodpeckers I'd never seen one that big and uh, he is gorgeous now when you hear rapid fire knocking they're calling for their mate but when you hear them slowly knocking they're picking for bugs they're eating so this one in this case was just eaten so I'm so sorry guys I didn't catch that for you and, and apparently I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to my filming so I'm gonna try a lot harder sorry I'm gonna try a whole lot harder I've been doing well with the viewfinder and not so much today for some reason anyway I'll catch you again all right I just passed up the uh, fork where I could choose to take the pine gulch and do a loop back around or continue straight now further up here is a crossover called Bard Owl and we'll see when I get to that if I could continue or if I'll just go on ahead and cross over so I'll let you know in a little bit this is the area it was ruined by fire. There's all, rare, all kinds of remnants of the fire here. Trees that was burnt badly. Lightning strike. Someone carelessly thrown a cigarette down. Maybe a match. I wonder what it was. As you can see though, there's new life coming up. Fresh trees. That's the one thing about a fire. It doesn't keep anything down. If anything, I mean, yeah, the older trees are gone, ruined, but there's fresh life growing up in their place. So, the terrain changes very quickly and easily on this path. You go from rocky to sandy to muddy to grassy 
to narrow to broad to broad from broad to narrow and just it's constantly changing mm -hmm. and right now we're back to smooth narrow and now rocky and <laughs> but that's what it does terrains change all the time okay I had to switch phones my video phone ran out on me but at least I caught the burnt forest. I know I got that much. Um, and I also received a notice that I've gotten a pledge. Thank you to Nestor. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. That uh, will come in handy for my next great walks. And... Um, like I said, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away and greatly, greatly appreciative, <laughs> thankful. Anyway, so now I'm having to record on my phone phone. And once again, uh, as I was trying to tell you, and I think by this time my video phone had quit, um, the battery is weak on it. I'm going to have to get the battery changed out on it, but it does pretty decent. It does pretty decent. That's an investment that I'll have to take care of in, before long. But anyway, um, as I was trying to say, I hadn't come across the, the barred owl. But this might be it right here, because there's a sign saying Caution Road ahead. So this might be it. And if it is, I'm going to go on ahead and take it. It's got a purple. Yep. This is it. This is the barred owl. So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to head back. Um, I don't think I'm actually capable of rocking the pine gulch uh, physically right now but um, seeing that there is also bass strap um, more than likely I'll be coming back uh, hubby had mentioned that I would have to do two filmings of the place anyway so that's what I'll do I will do um, the Pine Gulch next time, if possible, if I remember that I need to. And hopefully I'll be in better shape. I'll be able to accomplish it. And, um, we'll see what's on the trail heading back around. You know, be careful on the road because this is kind of a public road, even though it's a park road. And, um, We'll see what's around on this one. I'll get back at you. Okay, right now I am going through Pine Gulch. And the pines are beautiful. Look how bright green. So gorgeous. Surprisingly, <laughs> it smells like baby powder through here. Honest, with a hint of pine. It's reared. The smell, it's actually a very nice scent. But it is, it's like baby powder with a hint of pine. The weirdest scent I've ever smelled out in nature. It, this is like a rocky sandy area. Uh, kind of reminds you of the orange orange sands that you'll find in a desert kind of feels like I've got some uh, spider web on me anyway um, it's a narrow path through here but as you can see like it's a kind of a valley like so they couldn't have made it very 
uh, ride. There's supposed to be a scenic overlook around here somewhere. So I'm going to see if I can find that. And I'll get right back to you as soon as I find it. Okay. There is a scenic overlook. It's just in front of me. There's a parking lot for it. But I'm going to use this point. And look at that vast field out there. There's farmland out there. But a beautiful scene. All right. Let's go on ahead. Right back onto the original trail that I started on now. I'm heading back to the car. And basically, like, this park is very beautiful to walk on the whole park. There isn't any major sights to be seen. Some parks have got really major spots to look at and others is just the beauty of the nature and this is one of those parks that's the beauty of the nature an enjoyable hike as i said where you can enjoy the beauty and have your quiet time get close to god or meditate or whatever have you and as i said it does offer uh, shelters if you want to uh, do uh, shelter stays and it has spots for you to do RV and uh, spots for picnic and tent. There's also uh, fishing um, and boating. So even though there isn't any like historical spots so to speak of to really look at uh, there is a bridge that was made by the triple c and of course the pavilion that i showed you that was also made by the triple c um if i can stop to get the bridge i will show that in the afterthought but um yeah i see this place worth it uh the hike is also good for those it's it likes to exercise and whatever um it's easy to moderate to somewhat rough uh i didn't walk the rougher areas if there is an area that's tougher to walk i didn't walk it um but according to description, the one trail, which I assume is the Pine Gulch, because I didn't walk all of Pine Gulch, is the rougher trail. But it's still a good place for exercise and, and just enjoy the beauty. The, the um, fascination that the area has grown back up after the fire and whatnot. So yeah, it's a, it's a marvel and a wonder. Just a really good place to hike. And I recommend it. As always, when you go to these places, be sure to wear the proper footwear, the proper clothing. Uh, make sure to have a jacket on hand because you don't know if the weather is going to change uh, and please by all means make sure to have plenty of water do not get caught out on these nature trails without water it is very vital that you stay hydrated just like in the instance where I was on that one trail and I ran out of water and I got turned around you never know when there's going to be a case where you can't read the map properly or the map isn't marked well or even the trails themselves and you get into a situation where you're overheated you're dehydrated and you're disoriented you don't want to get into that situation if the scenario comes 
and you do get twisted around at least you can have the assurity that you've got plenty of water so by all means make sure you've got water above everything else and it is important that you have the proper footwear because you can't do any walking if you got blisters sore or worn out feet so yeah always make sure to wear, wear proper shoes whether it be hiking boots that's got good cushion plenty of room for your feet to move in without getting blisters and uh, at all possible try to wear full slacks even if they're just joggers because you might end up in an area that's got overgrowth into the path and you don't want to scratch your legs up and um, of course the jacket in case the weather would change you don't know what it's going to end up doing so you want to be prepared for that and plenty of water plenty 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 of water but yeah this is another park that I recommend now I do these hikes for those who can't do them themselves or for those who are interested in Texas parks or any place else that I might end up doing a film out somewhere in another state or something I show these off so that people can either come and see for themselves or for those who can't I do the hard work and you get the pleasure <laughs> anyway I love you guys and I appreciate you and once again thank you so much Nestor I appreciate that and to all my supporters whether you're just viewers or you support me financially I greatly appreciate you you all are wonderful and terrific people and I love you guys you all have a great day I would like to thank all my supporters on Patreon and BitChute. The funds are greatly appreciated. And they go towards supporting the great walks where I show off parks and attractions. If you would like to be a supporter also, then you can do so through Patreon. The links are left below the videos in the description box. Or if you would like to on BitChute, you can do so by subscribing to me on BitChute and go through PayPal. And I thank you in advance. Site here to show off. This is a, a uh, cedar elm. This one right here. It's got a whole lot of uh, moss like hanging on it. Kind of reminds me of the moss that hangs on the trees in Louisiana at the plantations it does stand pretty tall some trees are really worth looking at <laughs>